morning from Oaxaca. This here is just the courtyard of the place I'm staying, the Hotel Trebol in El Zócalo, the center part of Oaxaca. And this is where everything happens in Oaxaca, and I mean that almost literally. You'll find a little bit of everything here from people just hanging out and walking around, street vendors, uh, teenagers making out, um, protests, of course, political demonstrations. Um, I'm a big believer in walkable cities and places you can uh, explore on foot. And this is definitely that. I think every city should have a spot like this, if not multiple. But I'm really happy to be in one right now. While there's a ton I appreciate about Oaxaca, of course, I also don't want to overlook the fact that we are in one of Mexico's states with the highest rates of poverty. Oaxaca has been experiencing a drought for about the past five years, and I happen to come right in the middle of rainy season, and the first good rainy season in a long, long time. For a lot of the people I'm meeting, them sharing their stories with me is a big act of generosity because this is a critical time for them to be planting trees and crops and the things they'll need to get by for the rest of the year. A lot of the poverty here and in many other similar places, especially in the rural areas outside of town, are tied to environmental conditions. The drought was really, really bad and climate change poses another grave threat. It's not even a future threat, it's, it's something that's affecting life right now. And we are going to learn so much about uh, reforestation and some of the environmental challenges here, as well as the solutions that community members are acting on. We got an invitation to visit a group called Manos a la Tierra. They work in uh, some of the rural areas about two hours outside of here, up in the higher mountains. Uh, and we are going to see some of their reforestation projects live and in action. I was joined by our film team, Mao and David, and members of Mission Integral, basically my Mexican Plant with Purpose colleagues. Our visit started with breakfast with the community. No matter what's served, my favorite meals are ones like these. Local food served with heart and hospitality. So a big part of the reason why I'm here is I'm joining a team from uh, the Asbury Seminary to record a documentary. And we've had some fun. We've visited a few different people who've participated in Plant With Purpose's program, cultivating different crops, planting trees, and really seeing this area, this um, part of land, this watershed, transform. After getting acquainted and getting full, we started setting up our film gear to talk to community members. Um, we're just talking to them about their experiences as part of the group and restoring the environment. Bueno, puedes describir el grupo Manos a la Tierra, la funciona y así uh, la, las actividades que. A veces hace... no entendemos las palabras técnicas. Que sometimes, usan los we, ¿no? sometimes we don't understand si the technical esta, esta uh, words eh, that, that the engineers use. Mis abuelos me decían la tierra tiene vida. But my sí. grandparents used es, to say to me, tierra. there is life on the y earth. Pues, yo en un momento pensaba que a lo mejor estaban mal, and pero I was creo que no. thinking that they were wrong. Eh, tuve la oportunidad de eh, estar con Misión Integral. But when pues I have the opportunity to be with a, a Misión Integral, en este, en este, they told me that there tierra. is a microorganism sí. ah, pues vida, in the ¿no? soil, <laughs> and then I sí. say, okay, eh, there is life. ¿Cuándo empezaste la, el proceso de alimentar el medio ambiente, este lugar? Uh, ¿Cuáles eran lo, um, las, las dificultades um, del proceso? Nosotros mismos. I think Porque that most nos decimos, the no creo que vaya a pegar ese árbol si lo like sembramos. In our mentality. Sí, no creo que vaya a... Alir told me about how living with challenging environmental conditions year after year took a psychological toll on the farming population. People were so discouraged by how hard it became to do anything that it was hard to imagine the situation could ever be different. La gente, el pensamiento que todo humano tenemos, 
que decíamos que nosotros no podíamos meterle, no podíamos hacer nada por la tierra porque era el único Dios el que se encargaba de cuidarla, de reproducirla. Y mientras nosotros teníamos este, árboles, por decir así, para poder traer el sustento, no nos preocupaba y nada lo, lo, de, lo que había en nuestro alrededor. So in all honesty, this is one of my favorite parts of my job. Just completed two interviews, one with Alier and one with the Señora Esperanza. And now they're showing us a spot that demonstrates a lot of what they were talking about. That is 15 meters away by walk on this uh, steep hillside. As we were walking, some of my new friends introduced me to a new plant with a bunch of uses. So I just learned about a new plant today. This is the vergüenzosa. It literally means the shameful one or the embarrassed one. It's called that because if you tap its leaves, it closes up. And this guy has a lot of uses. Um, it's medicinal. Si uno ya ya no quiere tener los dientes, se lo pone en los en el diente y un un mes o unos 20 días ya rompió el diente, ya lo saca. <laughs> From there, we crossed a river onto Esperanza's farm. Here she showed us some of her more fascinating crops. Esperanza grows a lot of corn, including blue corn, which can be used to make lots of things. And sometimes, there's something else hidden underneath the corn husks. Ever hear of wheat lacoche? So that's that's, this is a kind of fungus. Really? Yes, and we eat it. That's, so it's an edible fungus? Yes. <laughs> ¿Cómo es el sabor de, de eso, ah, del coche? Pues no, no sé cómo es el sabor, como le ponemos ajo, le ponemos este pasote, chile y cebolla, pues como que ya agarra más sabor al pasote, pero tiene un sabor muy delicioso, como el, un frijol que le llamamos nosotros molido, que es frijol crudo tostado en comal, se muele y hacemos el molido, así casi viene saliendo este. Y no se puede comer crudo, ¿sí? No, crudo no. No, crudo no, porque yeah, se O guisadito <laughs> igual, <laughs> con aceite igual, sí. Esperanza practices agroforestry, which means she plants trees interspersed with her corn and other crops. Entonces, pues es una gran tarea que tenemos también con nuestra gente para concientizarlos, para que ellos también pues empiecen a sembrar arbolitos y vean esa gran necesidad de que hay, ¿no? Que ahorita con lo que ya está pasando, pues como que un poquito, como que empezamos a hacer conciencia, ¿no? De que pues a lo mejor por todo lo que está sucediendo en nuestro mundo, a lo mejor es porque nosotros lo estamos eh, acabando de destruir, lo estamos terminando, ¿no? Y creo que es una reacción de la naturaleza, ¿verdad? se está manifestando de que ya está dolida, está lastimada de, de tanto que le hacemos, pero creo que ese mensaje que la naturaleza nos da, nosotros todavía no logramos captarlo, no lo entendemos. Agroforestry is important. It heals the soil so crops can grow healthier. It promotes tree planting on farms which helps reverse deforestation and the soil and trees work together and they make up important carbon sinks that fight climate change. Tenemos, como decimos, ¿no? la esperanza de que algún día, pues a lo mejor toda la, la humanidad se va a motivar y a plantar un, un arbolito que nosotros hoy estamos plantando, ¿vale? Throughout the day, the air had been cool. The sun was strong, though, so the presence of some trees for shade made a noticeable difference. A lot of the area around the homes of the community members looked pretty lush with trees that were maybe about 15 years old. Some were even starting to have offspring. I was reminded that this didn't come easy, and that there was a lot more reforestation work that needed to happen across the broader landscape. This forest began with a vision had by some a decade and a half ago, and a forest like this 15 years from now will exist because of decisions made today. So I'm in San Andres Noxinio right now in, uh, at Sesic. Well, yeah, this is a, a demonstration and teaching site for a lot of community members. Um, from neighboring communities and kids as well. So a lot of the trees we saw earlier uh, started right here. We have este, Pino Michoacana, ¿Sí? Pino Oaxacana, ah. we have eh, Fresno, Fresno, and Leucaena. Aha, por ahí hay Cedro Blanco. 
Yeah, Bodino actually gave us a full demo of how to start growing trees in a seed bed using seeds from cones. Me ha gustado mucho este, estas plantas, los cuido como que si fuera un, este, fueran niños porque los tengo que limpiar. Cuando le sale pasto, le sale, lo tengo que limpiar para que crezcan buenos y sanos. Y ya después, pues ya en estos días a lo mejor ya voy a empezar a meter otros en mi terreno. Pues no había vida. Sin en cambio, pues hoy que empezamos a reforestar. Pues ya se ve el cambio, ¿no? Porque pues hay, ¿cómo se puede decir? Más árboles. Eh, pues ahora sí que yo lo veo diferente. Yo lo veo porque pues también empieza eh, como a llover más, ¿no? Porque antes pues yo este veía de que pues se cortaban los pinos y pues se quedaba así, ¿no? Todo este, sin árboles, entonces pues hoy yo veo que hay ese cambio, ¿no? Ahora ya pues... From seeds to saplings, then saplings to tree starters. And later on we'll be heading back this way for a planting day. Filming and planting trees works up an appetite. Thankfully, Oaxaca is one of the world's cities that truly celebrates its local cuisine. Any local will tell you about the seven types of mole in Oaxaca. Negro, rojo, coloradito, amarillo, verde, chichilo, and the table stainer, mancha mantel. And there's more to it than just mole. I decided to make the most of my time back in the city by trying to track down all the must-eat items I learned about. Luis and his team took me out for tlayudas, which are these, uh, they're basically like flatbread folded pizzas. Um, and that, uh, that has led me to chile rellenos. I also have this mezcal cocktail. I ran into this food truck cart and their menu said they had memelitas. It's hard to beat food you get from a, a cart right off the street with the sounds of traffic going by and, and buildings and everything. This is, this is the vibe. That is a strong, and wonderful flavor. My plans to walk around the cathedral were cut a bit short by rain. When the rains got heavier, I took shelter in an unlikely place. Okay, for something that is free and that is advertised as the postage stamp museum, this way exceeds expectations. A wall-sized map featuring stamps from every country in the world kept me entertained for a surprisingly long time. It's a new day and we're going to be planting trees with the community today, so first we'll need breakfast for energy. The uh, corn that Senora Esperanza showed me uh, grows this. Eso me gusta. <laughs> and I thought that this uh, scene looked a little bit familiar. It turns out that this was a uh, photo uh, that my friend Kirsty took while she was here. Kirsty passed away in an accident last January. She loved nature more than most people I know, so it makes sense that breakfast in the mountains and days spent planting trees marked this trip. All right, right now we're getting the truck all loaded up with some saplings. We're ready to uh, have them planted at a reforestation site. Well, I've taken them off. From the looks of it, this hillside or mountain more likely uh, just keeps going. So I'm not exactly sure how long it's going to be until we uh, stop, park, and plant. But judging by uh, how far ahead some of the younger crew members are, uh, we still got a ways to go. The youngest of us is maybe five or six, and the oldest, well, I don't know, but I'm gonna guess maybe in the neighborhood of 60, 60 plus. And so I split the difference. I'm in my early 30s, but I'll tell you that this is a demanding climb for me, so. All the more kudos to everyone else along that spectrum of ages. All right, looks like we're finally at a spot where we'll do some planting. We made it. 
We arrived at a mostly barren hillside. There was literally one tree. Planting other trees here would accomplish a few things. Something significant about how these trees are being planted is that they're being planted on farms like these that are on very steep hillsides. They're very vulnerable to soil erosion and you can see evidence of that all around. Um, these are pines and as Alexander told me, pines grow fast, which is why these are some of the more beneficial species to plant here. Close to Don Freddy Nuevo? Alexander. Alexander? <laughs> bueno. ¿Qué tu edad? Eh, 17. Bueno. <laughs> ¿Cómo está la frecuencia que haces algo así? Eh, pues, digamos, cuando se pega más es en la temporada de lluvia. Right, so Entonces, eh, por frecuencia, es siempre en la temporada de lluvia. ¿Cada día en este tiempo? Sí. Y así son los arbolitos, si no los sembramos, pues no van a poder vivir ni nosotros tampoco no vamos a poder tener oxígeno el día de mañana, ni nosotros, ni, ni los, nuestros hijos, ni las personas que vienen atrás de nosotros. Pero por estar esta, en esta área, en esta parte, eh, es una parte en lo alto, donde se acaba de reforestar con los jóvenes, con todos los que nos acompañan y con los, con los amigos visitantes. Eh, el beneficio pues es retener la tierra, eh, captar más agua de lluvia. such a full week, such a full trip, and guess what? We're only halfway through my time in Mexico, so be sure you're liked, subscribed, all those good things, and we've got part two coming up soon. See you then.